once again welcome to this um, the next class on the Linux programming and scripting. Today we will be continuing the Perl programming language. Uh, so before I go into today's topics, let me just recap a little bit as to what we have done so far. In the first lecture of Perl, um, we started by actually looking into some um, basic language constructs. We wrote programs to write like Hello World. Um, we also kind of uh, understood how Perl reads the files or Perl reads input from the terminal and then outputs into the terminal. Um, we also um, understood a little bit about the basic data types that is a scalar data type and then an array data type. Um, array also we introduced something called a associated uh, associative array. Um, and um, essentially at that time we said that basically okay uh, string is another type of an array um, and then basically um, the string is again an array of characters and that is why it is like another array. Um, and then in the last lecture we learned a little bit more about uh, strings uh, as a data type um, basically we learned that um, we can have a, a strings of any length. The entire book can be considered as one variable, a string variable. Um, and then uh, we also did some string matching. Um, I hope you remember the s uh, slash, and then uh, basically the first matching uh, that we learned was equal to followed by the tilde or um, the wiggly character um, that's on. Uh, the one of the keys in the uh, the shift keys in the uh, keyboard. Uh, then that bigly character along with that we said basically if you add an s then we can do a, um, a substitute. Essentially, um, we can not only match but also we can substitute a character for another character. Um, then we also um, did basically um, some um, um, other types of matching one is the transliteration that uh, we talked about um, which is uh, represented as uh, TR um, and then here essentially we can um, change the characters from one case to another case uh, or substitute or some characters with some other characters um, things like that where um, lot of uh, other types of adjustments that can be done. Um, then we also talked about how to open a file and then read a file and then how to close a file. Uh, we also talked about how to write into a file which is using the ampersand and then we introduced a basic concept of what uh, what is the file handle essentially which is essentially the pointer to the file uh, using which um, um, Perl actually um, writes or understands the concept of a file. So we also know that um, there are um, specific files that are already built in uh, functions which are the less than stdin greater than or less than std out greater than and then um, we also saw the less than standard error std err and uh, greater than those are all for the predefined file handles which is which are essentially used to uh, read from and write into the um, uh, the terminal uh, or essentially for the for the program itself uh, other than that if you are defining a particular file handle we need to first um, open that file and assign a name for the file handle and then once we assign the name then we can use that name from that. Um, so, um, so that that is the so that that is the, the thing that we um, uh, learnt about that um, and then um, we also um, actually um, um, Saw some control structure. Um, 
so that the control structure that we learned was um, basically like I mean the if then else uh, if else if uh, else basically that is the if then else uh, construct um, and we learned a little bit about how to write those things and then we also um, started talking about the function calls essentially so um, the function calls essentially like I mean for so, um, this is something that um, um, basically uh, we know that um, a function call can be uh, uh, specified basically like it as a sub and then the function name and then we can also specify some argument and then once you write the function and then we can call that function into the in program by using the ampersand function. Then we learned about some escape characters um, so um, these are mainly for um, escaping special functions and here actually like we kind of distinguish between um, the the string with the like just the quote as well as the double quotes. So the key difference is that um, inside this one um, anything that you write is just uh, literally like translated or literally kept whereas here you can have additional um, variables and then the variables will be replaced at the runtime uh, by the program. Um, and then we also um, talked about a small quiz uh, which is what I wanted to um, talk about in the, that's the first thing I actually um, asked you what is the meaning of uh, this uh, uh, the backslash backslash n uh, as you know like the backslashes are the, um, is basically the escape characters essentially. So within the code if you specify backslash backslash n what happens. Um, so um, I also asked you to actually um, try to run this program basically the dollar a equal to single quote backslash backslash n then uh, dollar b is uh, equal to the double quotes dollar a and backslash n and then now you print dollar b what happens. So I hope you tried this out. Um, if you, have, if you haven't uh, you can still try it out uh, but I am going to give you the answer essentially uh, today. Um, so the answer is actually um, for printing the dollar B it is the, the backslash N basically this is also equal to backslash N. So as you know like the backslash N we uh, studied in the escape side basically like just specifying backslash N means that it is a new line character. But uh, in this case since we are escaping the backslash it is basically this is treated as a literal and then since this is treated as a literal even the N is also treated as a literal. Um, as you know like I mean within the single quote only the backslash and uh, the, the tick um, or the apostrophe are the only two characters that can be uh, escaped and it happens to be one of them so this is just a literal um, backslash n. Uh, so even if you just print this out it will be backslash n even if you are using it within this variable and then you are printing it out it is only backslash n the second backslash n is essentially treated as the new line so the program goes to the or the cursor goes to the next line. I hope this is clear um, if you have any other uh, doubts uh, please feel free to email me or uh, your TA uh, who should be able to answer uh, these kind of questions. So um, with that uh, we will start talking about today's topic essentially uh, today we will be continuing our discussion on the various um, um, uh, the 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 we are continuing from the, the escape characters we will go into more operators today and then uh, we will also look at some of the scalar variables uh, we will start talking about the scalar variables we introduced the scalar variables in the couple of lectures um, um, ago and to, today we will um, go more deeper into that uh, scalar variable. As I mentioned uh, the one of the goals for this course is uh, we will start slowly building things so that um, 
uh, by um, I mean we are not going to be like I mean we, are, we will cover some of the basic uh, information and things like that but we will start building this programming knowledge right from the get go I want you to um, study all the, the basic stuff and basically like every topic one by one and then at the end you can put together and write a program that is not the intent of this course as you um, go through the course you will be able to program uh, smaller bits of bits and pieces of uh, Perl which is essentially um, even the goal for Perl I mean, uh, somebody who takes the Perl is intuitive so that you can start coding even the very first day you do not have to learn, go through a course um, of uh, many many days before you start coding um, basically as you learn we build small small scripts and then we will build it up and then finally like by end of the course you will be able to do um, whatever programs that you want very easily with Perl. So let us uh, look at some of the operators, um, so the oper operators in Perl is a superset of uh, the other languages uh, that are there the C, Algol and Pascal. Um, basically it also provides automatic conversion between the strings and numbers. Um, there are arithmetic operators so operators are not limited to just this arithmetic operators but uh, the arithmetic operators are essentially addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus and exponentiation. So we will um, study these uh, operations um, and how to use these operators um, in, in this uh, section. Uh, there are also like relational operators for numbers and strings. Uh, they are both are separate. If you have a number uh, data, then you use one type of relational operator, and for strings, you use a different type of uh, relational operator. There is also a, a concept of this concatenation operator. Um, concatenation means joining uh, strings. So if you have like uh, many strings that you want to put together. Uh, there is a dog in my house and uh, each one is a separate uh, uh, string you can put together using the dot operator. And then for strings they, we also have a, a repeat a repetition operator uh, just the x which is very similar to the multiplication operator here. Um, the repetition operator um, essentially like works on the strings and basically it uh, produces multiple copies of the string we will see like I mean how this and you know the regular um, multiplication operator is this asterisk so the, the um, star uh, symbol uh, which is uh, shift 8 in your keyboard. So we will see like some of the examples as to how to use them um, and before that let me talk about um, the relational operators. Um, this is the table that we saw uh, previously in I think like a uh, couple of classes ago I want to reiterate once again. So um, in the relational operations basically like, I mean, we have set of uh, one for numbers and one for strings. So this is the number one number relational. And then uh, this is for the string relational. Um, so equal to is straightforward this is to compare uh, for EQ it is basically like two strings whether they are equal this one is like if two numbers that are equal. So this can be even when I say number basically it can be a variable so you can say like dollar x equal to equal to 1 this compares whether if x has a value of 1 um, and here like you can also say like dollar y EQ my name something like this so that this compares with whether the dollar is my name and then it does something. So uh, this is um, the EQ operator the less than symbol is for the less than greater than is for the greater than and less than or equal to these are like some of the um, things that are provided uh, you may wonder like I mean how do you use like less than greater than LE. Uh, G and all for the the string operations. Again, the the equivalent numerical value is used. Like so, for example, like you can actually have a, a string which is like twelve. So, 
so if it is a string operator then you will, you will say like I mean if my dollar number is less than literal 12 so um, here essentially like I mean you can um, again compare a number against the literal uh, um, string as well so same thing like I mean the greater than or equal to and then finally like not equal to um, we will use some of these things in, in various programs in the coming um, uh, lectures um, we will also have some assignments which will be uh, using these uh, concepts so here are some examples so 1 plus 2 straightforward it is 3 uh, this one 9.8 minus 7.6 is 2.2 again you see that basically uh, you do not have to explicitly specify any um, uh, floating point as you know in Perl everything is this floating point 3 times 21 63 uh, again uh, easily understood 14 divided by 2 7 10 divided by 3 is, uh, is a floating point number 3.33333 Again, Perl has basically the position is limited by uh, what your computer allows, and then the 10.2 divided by 0 0.3, 34. These are pretty straightforward uh, operators. Essentially, like I mean, so this is the addition operation, subtraction, multiplication. And division. So these are the basic operators. Now let's let's look at some other operators as well. So this one is the modulo operator. So ten um, modulo three is one, which is the remainder essentially. So and then 10.8 modulo 3.2 is 10 modulo 3 same thing basically and this is the exponentiation so 2 power 3 is actually 8 so here if uh, if you try to do this 17 less than 7 the answer is false whereas 17 less than 7 in the String operation, the answer is true. So some of these things basically based on what the operator you use is different. So if you are a numerical one, then you use this. Whereas uh, this one is used for string operation. This is mainly because I mean, when you compare the first one, and then it, it produces this uh, answer. And this is the concatenation operator, um, the um, dot. So it produces just a single one no space here so everything is just is joined together and here essentially like I mean the you can look at this one as uh, you should not have this W um, actually that is a typo um, but uh, you can see that actually it concatenates a literal string in with the, the new line and basically it combines it into one. So now we look at uh, some additional things basically like one thing that we talked about was this uh, repetition operator which is the um, X operator so um, the X operator essentially uh, multiplies that hello by 3 so you get this as the output. Then the world x two plus one and two plus one is in parenthesis that prints out world world world. So the parenthesis is actually operated first. So two plus one becomes three, and then three times world is essentially the same. Here again, when we use the x operator, the three plus two is evaluated, and then um, that is essentially five. And then five times three, so it is five by five, five. And five is treated here as a string or or a um, literal. 
but at the same time 3 x 3 plus 2 is actually 3 3 3 3 3 which is um, basically this 3 3 plus 2 is evaluated first which is 5 so it just repeats 3 5 times and hello times 2.5 is basically like only like 2 times it is printed out so the the last one is just omitted and if you do it anything less than 1 basically it is nothing is printed out. So I think uh, this is clear you can actually play with uh, this these operators um, to see like I mean what uh, various outputs are um, I will also give some exercises on later on uh, to work on these operators to see um, how you can make use of it. So now let us go into um, residence uh, one thing that I talked about here was uh, this parenthesis basically like how parenthesis changes the residence basically instead of world times 2 and then plus 1 it is actually like the 2 plus 1 is evaluated first and then world same thing like here we see like some presidents operators in play. So how does Perl understand this presidents are there any rules behind this uh, how to evaluate uh, the operations. So that is what um, we learn in the next section. Um, basically um, um, the the rules are fairly simple um, essentially um, for all the operators found in C the operators have the same precedence as in C so uh, this includes like the uh, plus minus uh, the, the multiplication division etc and then uh, you can check a table for the lower to higher presence I will talk about that table in the next uh, slide um, and then for the operators at the same level it is resolved by associativity okay. So there are two ways basically one is uh, there is a table which goes from top to bottom and then we also have some rules regarding the associativity which is uh, used to resolve for the operators at the same uh, level. So what do I mean by this? We, we will talk about this um, and if this is not clear like I mean actually there will be more chances that we will be covering this. So here I talk about the associativity and then the operators. So the precedence goes from top to bottom that is number 1 okay. So if you if you see like the one of them here not and then one of them here say multiply. So this takes the first precedence and then before this so basically like you have to evaluate the multiplication before you can use the not. But what if there are couple of knots in the same line so we go back here and then we say that basically the precedence is from right to left. So you first evaluate the rightmost one so for this one it goes this way whereas for and it is actually going this way. And then uh, R and XR again goes left to right. And then, so um, you, we can look at various things. One is uh, so there are various operators here. This some of these things we haven't actually like learned. Um, this one we have learned, which is the exponentiation, which is um, again going from uh, right to left. So this way. Um, and then this uh, unary operators are all like same thing. Basically, whereas um, some of the comparison act operators goes from left to right, here it's again like left to right. Um, all these things, like there's a comma operator, um, plus minus, they are all going like this, and then you can see that actually this plus and minus have a lower precedence than this multiply and add, multiply and divide. So if you have the uh, plus minus, then um, essentially um, no, that will that will happen later than the multiplication and the division, which is the normal uh, rule anyway. Uh, one other thing to notice: basically, the parenthesis will change this president order. So, if you put anything inside parenthesis, those are evaluated first, uh, and then before assigning this uh, president table. Um, so, there are all all the operators that are mentioned here have this president. So, I want you to go through this. Um, 
I have some examples uh, in the next uh, slide which we will go into now. Um, so here are some examples. So the change there is a, is an is a um, function call um, chdir and then basically uh, the dollar foo is some variable and then we specify like I mean okay if, if this condition is not true then die that is the meaning of this uh, particular statement we, we will talk about these kind of uh, statements in the, in the next section or in the coming section but I want you to pay attention to this one. So here we specify this without any precedence basically in this trade that is the same as writing first the chdir foo and then the uh, or die so this and this are exactly the same. If you put a parenthesis inside the the foo and then uh, doing the same thing basically that is again the same this is also exactly the same where, where we basically like change the with no space and basically we just uh, straight away declare the dollar foo as its argument and it is the same thing here. And then finally, like even if you say like change the plus the dollar flu foo, um, which is an addition operator, and then say like die, and then again that's exactly the same. That's because the addition takes precedence over this uh, relational operation. Uh, so this relational operation, I should say once again, is on. So just in case. Um, so now. When we use a, a multiplication operation instead of an or, for example, here, then this is same as the change the with dollar foo times twenty because now this one has higher precedence than this relational operator. So we go back to the thing, um, the relational operator here that's of a lower one than this. Uh, the asterisk. So again, you see that basically um, how the precedence work. So um, again, if when you do the chdir dollar foo, um, that's the same as uh, before basically. So here you can see that the first statement and the second statement are the same. Whereas here, first statement and second statement are different. But the second and the third are the same because now the, the parenthesis takes precedence over the star. And then essentially, like I mean, uh, it basically it, uh, so that dollar foo is associated with change there instead of print. Whereas in the first statement, without any parenthesis to modify the precedence, basically the foo is assigned with uh, 20. Another interesting one is this one. Uh, here we put the parenthesis around foo, but we add an additional operator. So you can see that actually, like again, this has a higher precedence than the addition. So it's again it's foo times twenty, and that's time uh, in the change term. Then we are actually uh, generating some uh, um, some um, random numbers uh, essentially. So this is random ten times twenty, which is essentially. You know, Random ten times two hundred. I mean ten times twenty, which is uh, two hundred. So it generates a random number between zero and two hundred here. And essentially, you can see that actually the, that's how this is taken. Whereas um, if you say like rand ten in parenthesis times twenty, then it generates a random number between zero and ten, and then that it multiplies by twenty. So you can look at this one basically like here there are maybe like uh, 200 combinations and out of that one is two. Here you have only 10 combinations and out of that one is two. So the answer may be like still like I mean the range is same basically this has 0 to 200 this also has 0 to 200 but you have only like 10 different values whereas here you have. 200 different values and it is choosing from one of them. So um, this, these kind of uh, precedence metrics and uh, this whole uh, uh, this discussion will help you to write programs 
which uh, you want to do it uh, properly because in this sec in this uh, section basically let's say that you want to generate a random number or some task which you think that basically um, which is a combination of two different types basically and then um, you choose to represent this way which is the correct way but if you are doing this way then you are actually like I mean you um, are not actually getting the full um, um, range to generate the random numbers because here the random numbers generated are like 20, 40, 60, 80 or multiples of 20 whereas here it is multiple of 1 so it is 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way to 200. So that is one way of looking at it so um, depends, depending on the applications you can uh, really generate and uh, sometimes like I mean if you do this then the reduce set even though the range is same you are actually biasing it uh, with only like 20 different values. So here is uh, one quick uh, uh, question again regarding the same precedence uh, that we talked about um, here essentially like I mean I'm declaring an array and the array contains values 1, 3 then I introduce a function called sort, sort is you can think of this sort as sorting multiple values and then I give like uh, 4 and 2 and then I say print dollar array so what do you think uh, will be the output of uh, this problem um, so I am going to give you the answer of course um, uh, for this one because um, it may be um, good to actually um, practice these kind of problems um, um, because um, again this is the kind of uh, things that you can do because Perl is a very flexible language uh, so um, there are not like hard and fast rules on things basically you need to understand how the systems work so that you can write the appropriate program. This also actually adds uh, additional complexity to the language and which makes debugging pretty hard because uh, a person may have written uh, one way um, his, uh, his or her algorithm and then uh, if somebody else wants to debug it. Now they need to understand how, what was the thinking behind uh, writing the program before they can modify it. So uh, again, it becomes very hard because um, all these complex syntax. Uh, how do you actually sort through those syntax? Um, again, um, I want to advocate for a program that is very clear and concise. But at the same time, you know, um, the when you go and appear in interviews. They will ask you to the understand the intricate uh, intricacies uh, of Perl. Um, so I think uh, you have to know this, but uh, in practice, make sure that uh, you don't really complicate uh, the programs and uh, keep it simple. Um, so let's see what the output is. So the answer is uh, one, three, two, four. So here there are couple of things that I want to note, note, note down here uh, number one implicitly the sort is actually applied here but within that basically like I mean the um, the comma operator gets the precedence so if first the comma is operated which is like now you get only 4 and 2 and then on which the sort is operated so you get the result as 2 4 then once that is performed then you have the other two comma operators so the comma operators are just basically more like concatenating those things so the array is actually comprised of just 1 3 2 and 4 so the answer is this I think uh, you can actually run this program and check it out whether you get the same answer or not. Okay, so let's move on. So as I mentioned, uh, basically the operators uh, can be operated on both uh, strings um, um, and also the numer uh, numbers. So if a string is used in a numerical computation, it's automatically convert converted into its equivalent numerical value, which is a decimal and a floating point value, decimal floating point value. Um, so 
couple of things to note one is the leading white space characters are ignored so if you start with blank number and uh, the blank is ignored only the number is taken and then the trialing non number characters are ignored so if it is uh, um, number uh, space number that's basically it's converted as just zero so that is the non number string is just converted to a zero so the numerical values used uh, in the string operation uh, it's expanded into whatever it would be printed Okay, so um, so let's look at some examples. Um, so here, in quotation, it's one, two, three, uh, Fred times two. So what would be the output for this? So it's this is the same as just saying one, two, three times times two because. The leading this blank, this is ignore, and then the trialing all these non number characters are answered, they are taken to they are just changed basically, they are, are ignored also. So the result is just 122 times 2, and the reason why this is the true is because of this. If you say, like, I mean, 1, 2, 3, Fred. X two, then the answer will be like one two three. Red will be a space, and then space, and then again space one two three. Red. Okay, well, let's look at one more example. So, what will be the answer for this one? So, as you know, like I mean, the parenthesis operation is the first, and so parenthesis performed that has the highest precedence. Along with it, there is a star, so this has the next precedence. So, 3 times 14, 3 times 4 is executed first, and then the answer is 12, and then that is concatenated as a string to x, so you get x12. And this is the concatenation operation. So the bottom line is like I mean most of the time we don't have to worry whether uh, we have a number or a string because we just perform those operations and uh, basically like we'll just uh, see what is the outcome. The only uh, issue here will be when we uh, use like relational operation that we saw earlier, uh, when seventeen is compared with. Uh, uh, Seven, actually, the seventeen is uh, greater than seven. So that, if, if you are saying like seventeen less than seven, that will be false. But in the uh, string terms, it's actually like one is compared against. So in seventeen, if you say lt seven, now one is compared against seven first, and then seven is compared against whatever is next here. But here there is nothing here, so seven comparison is not there. Only the one is compared against seven, and one is really less than seven. So this becomes true. So when you are um, writing scripts, you got to watch out for what exactly you want the results to be, because um, if you do something like this. And uh, use the wrong uh, relational operation, then you will get a result but which you wouldn't expect, and then as a result, uh, that will cause issues and it's harder to debug. Okay, so um, let's also introduce uh, the scalar variable. Um, we actually went through this a little bit uh, in the um, in the first lecture, uh, the scalar variable holds a single value. It's a, either a number or a string. The general syntax is essentially it's a letter or a digit, essentially with a, a prefix of a dollar, and then you can actually have a, an underscore also. So other characters are not allowed in the 
variable um, and um, essentially like I mean so they are not, it, it basically rejects the additional variable uh, additional uh, characters and it is case sensitive so you can say like I mean same thing like I mean dollar name is not not equal to dollar name. Okay, this is uh, yeah, true in both this as well as this. You can have different values for these things, and then for the name itself, there is no length limit, so um, you can have uh, however you want. Um, so let's look at uh, how we can use them, basically. Um, one way to use the uh, scalars is through an assignment. So um, you can assign values to the, the the scalar variables, and which you in turn you will be using it for um, various things essentially. So um, for example, here um, a, a typical assignment will be dollar a equal to seven. Um, and then we will say like okay dollar b is equal to dollar a plus seven. So here you notice actually like there are there is this is the equality operator. So um, here we just assign a value or assignment operator where we actually assign a value to this particular variable. Um, this is also some sometimes we can call it as initialization where we first assign a value and then we can do some operations on it. Um, here we assign dollar a plus seven to this one. So if the dollar a changes, say to nine at some point, then this that, that will be reflected here. So currently this is equal to just fourteen, but uh, it can change based on the value of it. And then here you can see basically that dollar c is um, weak, concatenated with dollar b. So can somebody say what will be the answer for this one? It's um, that is week um, fourteen. Um, so that's that's the way that we can write it. Um, and then here we say like b equal to in parentheses a equal to three plus four. So now what will be the value for the b? So here essentially like I mean you can think of the the parenthesis actually change the president so we need to evaluate this first and then do this. So in when we evaluate this this is an assignment operator when 3 is assigned to A and then that plus 4 basically becomes dollar D is equal to 7. Here it is basically like a continuous assignment essentially when we are just assigning to dollar F which is dollar is equal to 7. So both of them will become seven. So um, I think uh, this is the way that we can uh, change the presidents essentially, and also um, uh, we can um, uh, move some uh, operations um, basically on the the various uh, um, variables. The scalar variable is one of the most widely used. Uh, Variable in Perl, uh, pretty much and most of the operations that we do is uh, using scalars. Um, so the scalar variable, uh, um, we will learn a lot of uh, things about the scalar variables in the coming uh, lectures. So um, let me also go into the the binary operators, essentially, uh, or binary assignment. Um, so Essentially, this is very similar to C. If you know C, then uh, this will be fairly easy. The order of evaluation uh, is unspecified. So, if we go back to our um, the metrics uh, that we talked about here, uh, so the 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 Some of the plus pluses are there basically, so very similar to this one, um, but uh, they do not have any kind of associativity. Uh, so, so now let us see, like, I mean, what that means. 
So um, here A equal to 5 and B equal to 5. So it is a standard that is given. So now we are assigning A plus equal to 7. First of all, what does it mean? This means actually that it's a dollar a equal to dollar a plus seven. The reason why this order is un evaluation is uh, unspecified is because it doesn't matter how this this uh, this thing is evaluated. Okay, so in this case, the dollar a will have a value of twelve because um, it's, it's basically um, that's the value that it settles at okay so whether this is evaluated first this is evaluated first it doesn't matter um, this is so this introduces some kind of ambiguity later on we will talk about that actually so and then now we come to this basically so here again same thing so this is like dollar b is equal to dollar b Times seven, so that's why we get thirty-five. And then there's also like this concatenation operation, which can always be a binary assignment. Which is um, a lot of people use this shortcut uh, for the binary assignment, where they say basically say dollar string equal to day days, and then say like dollar string dot equal to of life so then now the dollar string will be equal to days of life or something like that so so it's a it's basically like i mean uh, um, we can actually um, create new strings very easily by using this uh, binary assignment um so now we come to this last example dollar b is equal to dollar a plus equal to 2 and then star dollar a minus equal to 2 so what will be the answer here basically first of all this assignment is the worst assignment so never never do this um at it's bad why is it bad the reason why it is bad is because Inside this whole thing, this order of evaluation is unspecified. So we don't know, like I mean, whether this is evaluated first or this is evaluated first. So now, how will you resolve this, and what will be the answer? Um, I want you to actually test this out uh, before I give you the answer, um, because again, like I mean, this is one of the key uh, points of understanding. Um, that um, we should be able to uh, understand how um, this is uh, this is done. So I'm going to actually stop at this point. I'll uh, go and do a recap of uh, what we learned uh, today, um, and then um, we will pick it up from this. Uh, meanwhile, I want you to experiment with this particular assignment. See what happens uh, and explain why you are getting that answer. Uh, so first of all, find out what your answer will be uh, when you do this. So follow this this one basically. Dollar A is five. Dollar B is five. Or actually, let's just make it dollar A as five, and then just do this operation. See what you get. Because again, this order of evaluation is unspecified. What does that mean? Find out and explain to me in the next class um, what happened. And in fact, I will also explain to you as to what um, you should have seen and why you should have seen that. Okay, so let's just uh, recap what we learned today. So we started um, with um, some uh, operations, uh, basically. Uh, so. We went through like the, the various operators. Essentially, in Perl, we have a number of operators. Basically, it's a superset of C, Algol, and Pascal. Um, and there is automatic conversion between strings and numbers. This we saw basically like how we can do this. Um, and in Perl, actually, there are um, arithmetic operators. 
addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, we saw that, which is the percentage, and then exponentiation, which is the double aspect. And then we have relational operations um, for and one set for numbers and one set for strings. Actually, we don't have a data type uh, where we can operate these things on. We can easily operate the, the string relational operator on the numbers and then the number operator on the string. Even though, like I mean, when we operate the numerical uh, relation operators on string on uh, strings, it can. Uh, complain saying that hey you are using a raw feedback here, but if you use the string comparison for the numerical side it won't generate any issues. Then we also looked at the concatenation operator uh, for strings. Um, then we also studied about the string operate uh, string repetition operator which is the X basically for multiplying numbers. Uh, then we went through all these um, various operators. Um, we also studied uh, some of the precedence uh, order. So this is one of the key things that we will again revisit in the next uh, lectures. In precedence, essentially, like when we said that basically we in Perl, the order of precedence is first of all it goes from top to bottom, and then it also follows whatever the associativity rule that are specified. In for the same operators, uh, you use this just this one row essentially. So um, and then and then that also varies essentially for some operators it's uh, right to left and some for some operators it's left to right. For example, the not functionality is actually from right to left, whereas an and and or and x are all from right to left. I mean uh, left to right. Um, so. This we learnt, and then we learnt also like mean how to answer some complex questions. Then we studied about the conversions uh, essentially, which is um, uh, how can we use uh, string in the numerical computation, uh, and then how can we use uh, numbers for uh, comparing in a string way, essentially. Uh, one of the conversion thing, the the rules are essentially very clear. One is I mean, you are converting from a string to a number, the leading white space is ignored, and then the trialing non number characters are ignored, and then the whatever is remaining that is your number essentially. Um, and then the numerical value used in a string operation basically is expanded into whatever it would be um, for uh, when it will be a print, when it will be printed. So this is something that we also saw. Um, and then we went into the scalar variables. So essentially, like these are scalar variables are variables uh, that hold a single value. Um, it's usually represented as a dollar followed by um, number of letters or digits, essentially. So you can have like dollar. One to three as a, a scalar variable that can hold some value, even though we don't want to. Um, we always typically uh, have a letter essentially uh, as a starting point. Actually, here also, like in syntax, we start with a the letter, then we can have any digits uh, or letters, um, or even um, an underscore. So we will. So the dollar one to three is not allowed as a variable, whereas dollar a one two three is okay. So um, again, uh, the the scalar variables, the variable names themselves are case sensitive, and there is no length limit for the, the, the variable name. So I I want you to keep in mind about these rules and uh, this um, the syntax issue, syntax uh, basically when you're writing the thing. And I I will ask you to follow like one type of syntax. You can so Perl allows this underscore and people will typically write like name one or me underscore one two three or you can specify like hello uh, my my Perl as another video. So um, they use underscore to link various words to form a variable. Uh, 
you can also use camel case because it is uh, case uh, sensitive and uh, basically you can say like uh, my uh, as one word or uh, me one two three. So I, I you can choose uh, one style or the other and usually let like people choose a style and it sticks to them for life um, so to speak um, and people who are well versed with Perl they typically choose this with underscore. Um, so I would like you to choose whichever one that you are most comfortable with in representing uh, various um, variables. Um, then we also learnt about uh, the assignments the two types of assignments one is a regular assignment which is um, basically assigning values to a scalar variable um, we use like various operators to achieve that assignment so assignment you can think of that as an operator which is uh, represented by equal to and then uh, we use uh, various types of assignments to feed into that particular variable on the um, left hand side. So we also learned about this binary assignment operator which is um, these kind of uh, operations essentially which is um, two operators linked together in here also. So basically one thing is the order of evaluation on the operands is unspecified so which one is evaluated first is not known. Even though, like I mean, most of these kind of cases um, we evaluate uh, basically uh, it's same as saying a equals a plus seven. So uh, the class is evaluated first before the assignment. So a will get the value of twelve, or b will get the value of thirty-five. But uh, when you use it with these kind of complicated way, there um, this um, you are using one type here and the another type with the same um, um, variable the value sometimes is uh, not what you expect. So um, I also gave you this example and basically uh, this will be a, a quick uh, quiz for next time to see whether you understood this basically run this uh, command and see whether what the result you get and then you can share it with me. I will also share my result with you uh, next time and um, give you an explanation as to why I see that value. So uh, hopefully I think uh, this is now where we are getting like more and more people into Perl. Um, so uh, thank you again for listening, um, thanks a lot, uh, see you next time, thank you.